In the previous video, we looked at how to start a project. How can we, and I'll turn on the screen here, how can we look at our goals? How can we look at our audience? And how do we define the project itself so that we have this really good initial setup upon which we're going to build in all our later steps? In this video, we're going to look at the very next step. Here, we're going to talk about the premise of our adventure, and we're going to look at some of the adventure concepts so we really have the beginnings of our outline. We're going to do that right now on Success in RPGs. OK, so last time we came up with this outline, and we talked about the goals, the audience, the project definition and parameters. And the very next step that I like to go to is to kind of begin to outline my experience, but starting with the premise. And this is a chicken egg question, right? Where do you start? Do you start at the beginning? Do you start at the end? Uh, doesn't one drive the other? Yes. Uh, so you might have lots of ideas. And in fact, I did have a number of ideas rattling on my head, but I wanted to think to myself for this one shot adventure that has this very big atypical play experience, how does it start? And I want to think through that premise and work with it. And so that's what I did here. And so I'm going to paste that in here. Okay, so the premise, you are flumps living underground. You siphon energy from near, nearby evil aberrant creatures. This is something that's well within what flumps typically do. The evil aberrants are activating a brain pool or something of that nature. And something psionic is there that's going to hurt the surface. It's always nice to have a save the world kind of premise, right? That's very heroic. It, it inspires us to action compels us, right? Well, I can't let the world die, so I guess I better do something. Um, so this must be stopped. Now, one of the things is flumps tend to just sit back and like eat sonic energy, even from very horrid creatures, but they're not necessarily the most adventurous types. So we need a call to action. We need something that's going to propel them forward. And what I came up with is adventurers came to defeat this evil, but they failed. And the last survivor comes to the flumps and with their dying breath tells them, here's what's going on, right? Um, and we talked about flumps having roles that they can somehow be like a class. And as in a, uh, f at a heist type of film, they're going to play different roles, right? Like not everybody is a thief They're or even if they are, they're like different types of thieves, right? But usually one is like a face type and so on. So they have different roles. How are they going to get those roles? Well, the flumps can get the adventurer's powers. Why? There is some aspect of this brain pool or of the psionic energies that are in the area. Maybe even a prophecy from the first flump is involved in some way. The first flump that came and settled this area and, and explained sort of why the flumps are here. Or maybe a magic item. Maybe some of all of these things. These can all result in the idea that the flumps can adopt the powers from these dying adventurers. That would give them sort of a reason that their life has changed, right? Um, it's like in one of those classic films where suddenly someone says, you are actually the heir and here's, you know, your powerful sword or the special movie amulet or something like that. That kind of thing. Um, so that's what I, I'm coming up with in the premise. And I'm further saying each player's flump has a personality to play with, the, to help with the role playing, right? Um, I'm not going to give you just a monster manual flump. If I did that, that would be kind of boring. Everybody's the same. So I'm going to come up with some way and encourage some way for the players to have a personality to help with role playing. And if you're getting these character powers over time, not immediately, but over time, it becomes easier to learn. So sort of the concept of unlocking powers, right? So that's a lot. But these are all ideas that I came up with as I was thinking through how this is going to start. And what I like to do is sort of tell this to myself a number of times to think through whether this sounds good to me. Hey, you know, I'm, you know, I sit down for this adventure, this convention one shot and, uh, adventurers are going to stumble. The last dying adventure stumbles and tells me about this problem. And I might be a little shy about this, but then suddenly I start getting these powers and I get to choose who I am and develop my personality. Yeah. I start thinking through, through how that could be pretty cool. Um, that starts sounding interesting to me. So that is my initial premise for how things are going to start. 
Then I want to look at how the adventure is going to take off across sections. I've got this rough, very rough idea of the start. Um, how am I going to set up the, the adventure? And here I'm really looking at the structure of it. So one thing that I always like to have is the overview. If I, and let me just kind of put in some, some basics here. Um, so I know that I want to have an overview for the dungeon master. Often I write this last, right? Because it's kind of a summary of everything that ends up being in the adventure, but I want to help the DM. And this is particularly important in this adventure because it's unusual. So I want to help the DM understand or GM understand um, how to roll, roll with this adventure, how to run this adventure correctly. Um, there's going to be introduction for the players, right? Something that says, hey, you have lived in the Underdark for you know many months. Uh, a flump long ago brought you here, uh, passed away, and you have been living in this cave siphoning off this surprisingly strong psionic energy and maybe over time it grew and you know that kind of thing right that lets them know hey things are happening and then there's going to be that and then one day you know this adventurer crawls into your cavern and they are falling over bleeding from all these places and they say you know the following right um so i think about this kind of thing there's gonna be some sort of short box text um, we're going to let players discover uh, their background in some way. Or maybe I'm going to ask them questions, right? So I, I have a lot of question marks here. Like maybe the start is a communal time of sharing. So maybe before I get into this dying adventure, I say, hey, tell me about your character. Um, or I, maybe I give handouts of personalities and see what is attractive. So something like that, right? To maybe give the players hand in deciding what kind of flumps they are before that happens. So I, I start liking that um, as I work through these ideas. So that helps me think through, okay, I've got the overview for the DM. I know what that's about. I know I'm going to have some sort of introduction for players. I've got a few, a few ideas there. Um, so now based on that idea that maybe it's the players that are setting the introduction, then I can go into my second part of this introduction, which is that the dying character will arrive and provide the mission to destroy whatever the psionic artifact is or stop whatever ritual is taking place when involving the brain pool. Cool. I feel really good about that. Um, now, the presumption is going to be that you are going to be in uh, this sort of safe zone. So the next step that needs to take place is we're going to, from here, venture into whatever the next area is, a less dangerous area, right? Um, we talked about zones last time. So choosing one of these outer zones where they want to go. And here I kind of go, you know what I need? I need a map. Let's spell it correctly. I need a map. So um, we're going to, in fact, say the map is on the dying adventure. The map one thing that's cool about it, Dying Adventures and their maps is their maps are imprecise, right? <laughs> it's whatever they were writing uh, in between uh, eating some hardtack, uh, iron rations, uh, running away from a combat, you know, something like that. So, I'm, so I start envisioning this map that's a really quite rough map and has fun questions and maybe scribbles on it, maybe blood drops on it from where they died. Uh, with some warnings, maybe some of them cryptic, but this idea of zones can be on there, right? The mines are over here, the docks are over there. That's awesome. And now if the players have the call to action of, hey, save the world, stop this psionic artifact, uh, get to the brain pool and steal the artifact. Um, and yeah, maybe that's it to actually steal the artifact, right? So go to the brain pool, steal the artifact, heist, um, there are these different zones and maybe a few clues. Oh, that starts sounding good, right? So now with the map, with the mission, the flumps will go into less dangerous areas or zones. And from there can start going on whichever they want. And one of our goals was a very open sense of where you would go, right? So this kind of idea of the zones, the map, 
gives you that kind of freedom, right? And, and the second thing, I, I love moments where players like get together and they're like, ooh, let's go over here. Yeah, yeah, this can be cool. And you know that you designed it so it works in either, in either way, right? But they, they have fun thinking through like, yeah, yeah, let's definitely go to the docks first or whatever it is. Um, so then I start thinking about construction wise, right? Like you're gonna have a bunch of in, encounters um, that uh, probably what you're gonna do is, is wherever you start, should be introductory, right? So we can think through a couple of things here. One is that the, the first encounters are gonna provide knowledge and ideas for what to do and maybe very minor dangers, right? We're not gonna uh, pit them into deadly combat when they're basically easy to kill flumps. <laughs> uh, we're gonna let them gather some information and sort of strengthen their resolve, their confidence, learn more about the aspects of this heist. The most logical place that they'll go to, so probably, you know, 99% of all groups are going to go to where the adventurers died because that's going to be the source of your clues and maybe some resources. And that can lead to everybody picking a role, right? I want to be the cleric. I want to be the fighter. I want to be the rogue, you know, that kind of thing. Whatever role wasn't in the dying adventure, we can get psionically some of the powers and essence of those dying adventurers and we can customize our flumps. That lets us decide what our flumps are like, right? This is the kind of stuff that I start thinking about, but I try to structure it this way, right? Because it all goes into this adventure organization and the different sections of the adventure. So first encounters are easy and probably the very first one, that doesn't have to be, but it probably will be, is where the adventurers died. All right, so that is probably um, a really good place to think through what what happens here a bit and maybe flesh that in a bit um so i started thinking through that a bit more and this is what i came up with um that you could give them a taste of this future thing they're going to encounter this brain pool with an artifact in it they have to steal by having maybe like a lesser brain pool that also gives you an idea of the sort of importance of psionics uh, makes the flumps feel special because psionics, by the way, if you don't know about flumps, they are telepathic. They feed off of psionic energy. So there's a lot here that creates synergy with the storyline, right? So if the adventurers died around a lesser brain pool, they um, this gives a lot of credence to the story and the concept of sort of, of reason that the flumps can interact with the brain pool, with the characters, and their first powers can manifest. So I'm already thinking to myself, okay, they're gonna the the you know the uh, flumps have a base stat block, and then they're gonna accomplish some initial character powers, and maybe I have some way that I follow a kind of track point system. I don't know at this point, but some kind of way that they're going to unlock additional powers, and this lets us go back to you know our goals here again. I'm always keeping these in mind that it has to be fun. And um, the idea that you want to be able to sort of, um, that it's easy to grasp, right? So I want to feel like I'm a flump and I want to feel like my ideas are easy and I can customize myself. So I'm going to start with a very basic thing that tells me, yeah, you're a rogue or a fighter or a cleric or whatever it is that we come up with. And then I'm going to be able to add to that. And that's going to feel awesome and simple, not overwhelming. So I'm thinking that there's some mechanic by which you gain these additional powers, right? That would be really cool. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, super complicated. Um, it can be somewhat basic in how that happens. And you'll see where I end up with this. But that was kind of my initial thought at this point. Um, then some other basic things that I think through concept-wise. Um, and that's around how we're going to approach the other encounters. So dangers that we find can impact play right and this is something i started thinking here about maybe setbacks like maybe if the alarm is being raised bad things happen or you don't quite yet unlock your powers i'm not quite sure about that but but the idea that dangers do impact play is nice because in a heist like one of the fun things is when things go wrong but not wrong enough to ruin the heist right it's not like you are in a combat that means no more heist is possible more that things get heightened the alarm is being raised over time 
And different games from board games to role playing games have things like a heat level, something like that, that sort of tracks this. So I'm thinking about that because I've played a lot of these things. Maybe there's something like that, but maybe it's something looser that the DM can play with. Um, you know, do I need a subsystem for this? I don't know. I don't know that I do, but I'm keeping it in mind in case. I'm also thinking that in addition to dangers that can impact play, there might be some allies uh, as well as foes, right? So it's not all bad. Um, how can you create disturbances? How can you hide who you are? I mean, you're a bunch of flumps that you're going to go invade like evil aberrants. Uh, they might know what a flump is, or even if they don't, they might just look, you do not look like a total horror. You look a little cute. I'm going to kill you. So that won't work. Um, so a way to kind of hide or conceal who you are could be good. Um, ways to learn about the artifact, the brain pools, um, all of these different pieces, right? Uh, the evil aberrants, um, the EAs, um, and, 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 you know, one of the reasons I, I'm like calling them EAs or evil, evil aberrants is that Mind Flare is not open gaming license. They would be an obvious foe, right? They, they're kind of like, if you think of underground adventures uh, and you think psionics, you're probably going to think of a Mind Flare, but I can't because that's not open gaming license material. It's not in the SRD. So I, um, it would have to be something else, maybe something in my own creation, maybe a spinoff of a creature that is um, in the... Uh, OGL SRD. So, uh, you know, we're thinking about these evil aberrants and it's good to think through how that's going to play out. Um, they're going to be something that you don't want to meet too early, right? Like whatever is replacing a mind flare or whatever the big thing is, I can't just be fighting that as a flump. I'm going to build up to that. So it's really the final zones that are going to have the evil aberrants, the EAs. Um, they are probably beginning some sort of a ritual um this is changing how the evil aberrants are organized maybe creating an opportunity for infiltration so i want to have some way to explain why you can walk in here um maybe the nature of what they're doing requires people to come in periodically right the way that like a casino requires someone to move the chips around um and there's caterers and there are all kinds of things right so maybe there's some kind of thing like that but we need opportunities for infiltration eventually we're going to reach the central brain pool and the artifact chance to stop it and escape steal it um the exacts of this you know i'm gonna play with this based on length like maybe you just need to get to it and do a thing or bring a thing to it or get it out of the room we can think about it right because uh, a lengthy getting there and running away might be too much for three hours so there might be a way that we can determine what that success is based on that um but here, I now have a really solid feel for what this adventure looks like. Uh, I've got an overview. I'm going to have, and, and not that I've written these things, but I know I am I'm mentally understand these concepts. I'm going to have the overview for the DM, super important because this is an unusual adventure. I'm going to have an introduction for players, and I've got some ideas of how that's going to play through. The first part is going to be this kind of establishing your community, um, thinking through what your PC is like, your character, what, what, what makes your flump different than the others in some way. So you start coloring your flump. And then there's going to be the second part of the introduction that's going to be the kind of call to action with this last breath character showing up and telling you what's going on, and they're going to have the map. That's going to lead the players to looking at the map to from there venturing into less dangerous areas. I'm going to have this concept of zones and kind of let them go into these zones some way to separate from the final zones where you're going to have more danger. The initial ones will be easier, let you build, gain some confidence, gain some knowledge, um, get your character powers, choose a character class kind of thing. And so you're building up the stat block over time of your, of your flump. And that makes it really fun to play. Um, it gives you an investment where you feel like you're gaining, you're not gaining levels, you're gaining capabilities. That's kind of cool. Um, Maybe some ideas of alarms or ways that how you approach, how well you're pulling off the heist impacts play. Eventually, we're getting to the final zones. The final zones are more dangerous. You are trying to make it to that central brain pool. And there, that's the high stakes moment. Chance to steal this thing. We're going to have to think about how exactly this ends and resolves itself. Maybe it's getting all the way back out. Um, 
It could change based on length, but you know, it's a three hour adventure. So we're going to have to think about that. And you're going to make it out of there probably with the artifact or other important piece. And hopefully that's success and you've saved the world. <laughs> so there we have it. We have our, our basic concepts here. This now we've got our goals. We've got our adventure uh, outline es essentially in a rough. This isn't really a true outline, but more like the organization of it. Now I'm really ready to start. Um, this feels like a project to me. And when I'm looking at a successful project, this is what I must have at the beginning. Now I've got ideas. My brain is, <laughs> it's like I'm in a brain pool. I'm ready to start fleshing this out, right? The next section for me is to start actually brainstorming through these individual pieces and start fleshing this out. We're going to go through that next time on Success in RPGs. Thank you.